Snoopy design where we've got the little Snoopy house and then we've got two different positions of Snoopy on top. One where he's got where he's like driving the airplane and he's like a little aviator and then the other one where he's laying down all like sleeping with Woodstock on his belly. I love this. It's so cute. You could make as many Snoopy versions as you want. You could give them different like uh, temperature themes. There could be a Valentine's Day Snoopy on there. There could be a Christmas one, Thanksgiving. You get the idea. I hope you like it as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. We are going to begin with an overlay of a green glitter acrylic. This is one that always reminds me of grass. It's just a very classic green color. I love having a color in my acrylic collection that reminds me of grass because in certain circumstances like this, it is perfect. And then I'm going to encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it stays nice and strong and smooth and all of that great stuff. And then file it into shape with my e-file. After I have it filed and it's all smoothed out and it's all perfect and pretty then I'm going to take and I'm going to have a piece of paper and I'm going to draw a template for my Snoopy house I have the first shape is a square that's going to be for the base of the house and then I'm going to make a larger rectangle that is for the roof and then a very skinny rectangle that is for the little piece that attaches the two sides of the roof together where Snoopy likes to rest I'm going to lay a nail form backing over the top of my drawing and I'm going to sculpt all of those pieces in multiple multiple times. I'm going to make two of the first square, two of the large rectangle, and only one of that skinny piece that goes on top. If you want to and you want to be forward thinking and plan ahead, place a magnet inside that skinny piece that goes on top right now. Don't wait. I did wait. It does work. I'll show you how to add a magnet later because of that little element that I forgot to put it in now. However, if you are going to be planning ahead and just make things a little easier on yourself, put the magnet in now. Here I'm going to be sculpting that first piece that's for the roof. Having the template underneath makes a shape like this so much easier to work with because you do have that opportunity to just make the shapes as close to the same size easier. So when you're making more than one of the exact same thing, it just automatically has a better chance of coming out even. But because you aren't measuring things and you are working with a product that isn't necessarily always cooperative, don't worry too much if it doesn't automatically come out perfect. Allow yourself some, some opportunities to fix things later. I'm going to glue one of the roof pieces onto one of the bottom of the house pieces. I'm going to then, after I have both of them done, make sure their angle's the same. I'm going to glue the middle of that little roof connector piece. I'm going to glue that to one of the sides, hold it in place, and then I'm going to glue the other one in place. As you are gluing all of these pieces together, secure them with acrylic as you go if you can, if it works. Otherwise, you just wanna very carefully hold everything together because it's very delicate until it's all secured. After it's been glued together and you can flip it over, definitely fill in underneath the center of that roof with plenty of acrylic. You want it to be very strong and there's so much little attached pieces there that you really gotta secure that. I'm going to trace the inside of the house with a pen, just on a piece of paper, kind of draw out the shape of how I want want the sides to be the ends of the house. I'm going to add a door drawing to one piece and then I'm going to sculpt two of these just like I sculpted two of the other bottom pieces of the house. However, one of these is going to have a doorway in it and the other one is not. To make the doorway, I'm going to start just by leaving that area without acrylic as I'm sculpting this. As you can see, I did add a curve to the bottom of my doghouse. That is because this house is going to fit on a nail that has a curve to it. If you sculpt it completely flat on the bottom, as you go to set it on the, on the nail, there's going to be giant gaps on the side. So if you try to plan ahead for that and you make a little curve on the bottom of these side pieces, it makes it just fit together that much easier. After I have the base of that house side done, it's got the little opening for the doorway, I'm going to sculpt a section of acrylic that is black just next to the house. Let that set up, kind of watch it until it really starts to turn matte. As I'm waiting for that to turn matte, I am going to sculpt the other side of the house, just kind of go back and forth. I am not a big fan of waiting for things to be done and just staring at them. I like to work on something else if I can at that moment. I like to just kind of keep moving while I'm waiting. So as I've got that first little house bit done, I'm going to add a little bit more acrylic to the back of the house that has the house side that has the door, pick up the black acrylic, set it on top so that it blocks the doorway. Secure that with a bit of clear acrylic and then you can start holding all of your pieces in place. Make sure they fit and then grab some glue and then you're going to hold them in place with the glue until the glue sets enough where you are confident in letting go. Once that's the case and you're like, okay, that side's down, flip it over, add the other side of the house, the other end piece to the other side, 
hold that in place. Once both sides of the house and everything has been attached, you're going to fill in all of the gaps and there will be gaps with acrylic. Just go through with the same color red that you've been using for the house all along and make sure that there's no visible big gaping holes. That's going to do two things. It's going to make sure that mice aren't going to get into Snoopy's house because you know, you don't want cracks in your house, but it's really going to make sure that everything is strong. Whenever you're making something like this, strength is paramount because the tiniest little movements on it, you don't want it to break. You don't want to be, you know, working on it, accidentally drop it and have the whole thing fall apart. If you're like me, I drop things all the time. So accidentally dropping something that I'm working on isn't just a joke. It's a serious concern that I am always thinking about because like I said, I drop things all the time. And so I want to make sure that that isn't going to be an issue. So I always really secure everything so that as I'm working on it, I just know it's going to be okay. I'm going to add more acrylic to the front of this house. If your sides are starting to look a little scruffy, if you're like, you know what, they were looking so much better before I added these other bits of acrylic, you can always go through and file them. I'm going to do the same thing, fill in the gaps that are on the top of the house if there happens to be any. And then I'm going to take my e-file and I'm going to clean up anything that I feel needs it, including just the curve on the bottom of the house too, because that was not quite what would fit on the nail. If you don't know if it's going to fit on the nail, just hold it up to the nail and see if it fits. Just test that theory. Then I'm going to take a narrow bit and carve a little hole on the very top of the house for where the magnet is going to B. So just make a little indent. Like I said, if you had a magnet in there previously that you put in from the beginning, you wouldn't have to do that. Glue the magnet into the hole, make sure that you have it nice and flush, and then add some more red acrylic over the top of it to fill in the gaps around the magnet and hold it in place. After that is done and you have your magnet back where it's supposed to be, everything looks hunky dory, then you can attach it to the nail. If you wanted to attach it to the nail prior to adding the magnet and just put it, you know, get it in place, you could. I found it easier to work with it holding it separate from the nail. So you're going to grab some nail glue, place it down, hold it with firm pressure until it holds on by itself. And then you're going to grab some more of your red acrylic and you're going to fill in the gaps around the bottom. Same thing, can't let the mice get in. But as you are filling in these little gaps, gaps around the bottom, you may notice that your red acrylic is going to stain your green background. Mine certainly did. Red acrylic is notorious for being a stainer. It just does. And this filed surface of the green background is going to grab pigment so well. If you do notice that that happens and you do have a little bit of a stain around the bottom of your house, depending on how severe it is, it may not be a big deal where you want to do anything about it at all. If it just looks like a little shadow, I would personally leave it. However, if it is a very big, obvious smudge or stain, if you take your e-file or a hand file, you can buff the surface of the green and that little residue, the stain will come right off because it's just another layer of acrylic on top. And so if that needs to come off, I would start with a hand file and see if you can get it off with a hand file, but then otherwise a a little bit of a um, e-file, just a little swipe would take that off. Once you are done with your house, you can set that to the side. You will do some painting on it later, but I want to get started on Snoopy. I'm going to sculpt my Snoopy pieces on a nail form backing using the template that I made to get an idea of how big they need to be compared to the house. Because I have the house template, I can use that to draw or to sculpt, I mean, my Snoopies. If you do want to draw them first, draw Snoopy, you certainly can. It is not something that I felt like I needed to do for this particular design. I felt like I could just kind of sculpt it and kind of go as I keep sculpting as I go. However, if you're more comfortable working on top of a template or a stencil, you certainly can draw out the little shape of Snoopy first. I'm going to sculpt him sleeping. So he's got his belly sticking up, his head sticking up at his nose. And then I'm going to sculpt his feet separately to the side. So his feet are going to be sticking up just like his belly is, but instead of being rounded, they're going to face flat the other way. And so I can't sculpt them attached. We'll just glue them on in a little bit and that will work. That will work just fine. So just sculpt two little feet to the side. Once you are done sculpting those pieces, wrap your house with a piece of aluminum foil really try to get it nice and flat place a magnet on top of the one that's already in the house so you've got a house with a magnet a piece of aluminum foil and then a magnet so that aluminum foil is separating the two magnets grab your snoopy piece and you're going to i'm just going to put a little bit of white acrylic on top of that magnet and then hold the sleeping snoopy body on top of it it may not hold immediately. However, I find nail glue does not stick all of that well to magnets in this type of a circumstance. So I didn't think nail glue was going to be the best choice, but after just a second, it does hold. Once it starts to hold, really fill in around it with more acrylic to get that hold secured before you start just kind of really pressing hard on this to get all the shapes filled out. 
just keep working on it hold it with multiple fingers if you need to to get the angle right and then once you are happy and you're like yep this is good grab large beads of acrylic comparatively not like with a number 16 brush or anything but larger beads and just really start filling out snoopy he has so much shape that he needs he's so flat right now he's like a little snoopy pancake we want to make sure that he looks three-dimensional from all sides, all directions. You're going to round out his belly for sure, his head. You're going to make sure that it looks like he's Snoopy. So just keep adding more and more layers of white acrylic. I do find it helps to tip your nail that you're working on to the side so that the acrylic doesn't run down the side of the house. It kind of stays where it goes. It also helps to use a monomer that is fast setting because then it will hold its shape a little quicker and you don't have to catch it as much. You don't have to chase it around the nail. The other thing that's going to help, especially if you're having trouble keeping the acrylic where you want it to be, is after you pick up a bead of acrylic, in this case, this white acrylic, you're going to flip your brush upside down so that the bead of acrylic is up and you're going to press it against your paper towel. Make sure you're doing this in clean sections of paper towel. Do not press your brush out on top of, say, a place where you just wiped red out of your brush or even just white. You want to make sure it's always a clean spot because that'll pull extra liquid out from the back of the bead of the brush or out of the back of the bead of acrylic and it'll make it a little firmer just from the beginning. Round everything out, keep adding all of this extra shape. As you are continuing continuing to add shape to your Snoopy, observe him from all sides. Don't just look at him from the side that you're working on. Look at him from top side, front to back. Look at him from the from his head, like the top of his head down. Make sure it looks how you want it to look. I'm going to be adding the length of his legs coming down. I wish I could nap in the afternoon on in the sun on top of a roof. It looks so pleasant. And then just keep adding all of these little bits, thickening them up. Everything with this is very dimensional, very extreme. You're going to separate the two little legs with the very tip of your brush. If your brush does not want to do that, you could also use like a dotting tool to try to separate those areas, like a very thin pointy dotting tool or a floss pick. Floss picks, I love using floss picks for sculpting. Glue his feet in place. And then while that glue's drying, I'm going to be adding his arms that are on the sides of his body with just the little tip of his paw hanging down. I don't know if it's just me or if anybody else, if that were me and I was sleeping on top of this roof, my arm would be just straight down. There would be no keeping it close to my body. Um, to have that little paw hanging down, flip this guy around, repeat the process for the other side. As with everything with these designs, when you're sculpting something that has, where you, it's observed from all sides. Make sure that you do that too as you're sculpting. I know I said that just a moment ago, but I just can't stress it enough that you wanna make sure that it looks how it's supposed to look from absolutely every angle. So just keep adding all of these details around out the bottom of his feet. His feet can't stay pancakes. Nothing about Mr. Snoopy can be pancake-esque. Keep adding all of these little bits of details around out the top of, his, top of his feet as well. Keep adding the subtleties that are needed as you continue working on the different areas and you're adding the details to it, it's easy to forget something. And the reason I say that is because you've been looking at this for a long time. And it's easy to just skip something like a connection here or a connection there. If you find that you're going cross-eyed because you've been staring at whatever it is that you're working on the Snoopy for just too long and it's just it's become too much because you can't see what you're looking at anymore because you've just been watching it for too long, um, take a break. Put it to the side, work on something else, go fold, go, go fold a load of laundry or do whatever it is that you have to do and then come back to it. There's no issue with that whatsoever. If it makes it so that you can see what you're doing and you get a fresh pair of eyes, maybe that's what you need. And that is definitely a technique that I utilize all the time. I never finish a design in one day. It's always multiple days. Even if it's just the painting that I do later, I do all the sculpting in a day. I can come back and if I miss something, then I'll find it and then I can fix it at his ears hanging down and then after that's been cured gently peel the aluminum foil out from underneath his body it'll come off the house really easy but especially around those ears make sure you're really delicate with them on a nail form backing once again i'm going to be sculpting woodstock with a bright yellow just go through and sculpt him very very tiny it's a really hard perspective to get right just because woodstock is so small and you have at least in my circumstance you have no reference because i don't have my little snoopy next to it or anything if you were going to be doing this and you did feel like you needed that reference um you could certainly place your snoopy next to it or even just have drawn your snoopy as a template like i mentioned earlier and then you would have had an idea of how big he is to sculpt your woodstock. Once your woodstock is all sculpted, you can glue him to the belly of Snoopy. Hold that in place until it starts to grab. And then once that is, you know, secure enough where you feel like you can work on top of it, then I would grab some more of that yellow and round out woodstock just like Snoopy. Add more to both sides. 
you won't need to add as much acrylic to the side that was up on the nail form backing because that side will have a slight roundness to it to begin with. But the side that was down on the nail form backing, it'll be very shiny and it'll be incredibly flat. That side you'll really, ooh, excuse me, you'll really need to round out. You'll need to add a lot of acrylic to the back of it so that it really has that puffed up three-dimensional shape. And it's, there's just a difference from side to side. So don't assume that just because you have a, si a bead of this size that you apply to one side means that it'll have to be the same on the other side. You'll have to reassess and compare. Add Woodstock's tail. And then after you're done with that, um, you can do the detailing on those Snoopies. Or if you want to, you can just move on and do your other Snoopy. That is the exact same process as far as just a technique base goes. So if you, you know, if you don't care about watching another Snoopy, I would skip ahead a few minutes. Otherwise, you can stick along for the ride and we are going to watch this. Um, so for our next Snoopy, because there is a little bit more detail that goes into this one from just the Snoopy perspective, we have just the head and the body. And then the feet will be sculpted separate and his arms and his hands or his front paws will be sculpted separately. And to begin with, that's just what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do the other parts. I'm going to add his nose, although my nose broke off eventually and I had to re-sculpt it from the beginning. So, you know, either way. But those are the pieces I'm going to do for this moment. And then just like I did before, I'm going to glue Snoopy onto the little magnet that's already on top of the, top of the doghouse. And then I'm going to round everything out same process as you can see my little nose little nose is missing um just keep adding adding more and more layers to your snoopy so build up one side build up the other side exact same system as you are doing this if you have never built up any characters like this you've never had this really 3d design a design like this is a great way to start because even if you don't do like the magnets and the whole thing, if you just make a character that sits up, Snoopy is a fantastic one because he doesn't have much for really fine detail. He's all very round shapes. And those round shapes are a good way to start because in some ways they're easier and in some ways they're harder, but they do make you learn some basics. When you're sculpting something that's flat, you can just press the belly of your brush on it and get it nice and flat. When you have a round shape, you have to have control of your brush to gently coax the acrylic into that nice rounded molded shape. So if you are just kind of starting out, you want to make something crazy, sculpt Snoopy. He's fantastic. And if you want to kind of start doing a character or a thing that is extra three-dimensional, again, Snoopy is a great example of a character that kind of gives you that opportunity to sculpt something that's up and out, but still keeping it round, everyday shapes, circles, that peanut shape, you know, ovals for the feet, everything has an identifiable shape. So all of those things can make him a very good starter one. I know at one point I made a Winnie the Pooh video, um, 3D, way back when. It's a super old video. Quality is <laughs> kind of poor um, as far as like the actual videography goes. But the that design, you know, a Winnie the Pooh, same idea, same very round shapes, basic shapes. Great, great character to start with if you are just starting characters. Both of these two, if you are, you know, thinking about testing the waters with it. I'm going to glue on his feet, glue on his arms. With this Snoopy, because he is the little aviator Snoopy, he's got his hands that are out in front of him, like he is steering an invisible steering wheel. There's nothing between them. He's just got his hands out there. Or paws. I also sculpted his tail. And then on the nail form backing, he does have a scarf on. And so we're going to be sculpting the flying tail of that scarf that'll stick out straight behind him. Leave that on the nail form backing to cure for a moment while you start adding the other details like his hat and his goggles. So I'm going to begin with the hat with green. Depending on where you look, Snoopy's hat color is a different. I've seen it where it's brown. I've seen it where it's red. I've seen it where it's green. I liked the green, especially since the scarf was pretty much always red. I thought that gave a little bit more contrast. And the brown just seemed a little too too boring and it didn't show off the goggles as well so between the fact that the goggles are brown as I'm sculpting currently and the scarf is red I figured the green was just a nice a nice alternate color however like I said there are so many different colors that I saw when I was looking for my reference photos that if there's one that seems more appropriate to you certainly switch it up to whatever whatever seems like it is right the other thing that's fun is there are so many 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 ways that Snoopy hangs out at his doghouse there are so many different um you know, holiday themes that you could apply to this design, different patterns. You could have more different um, poses with Woodstock. There's just a lot. You could also add Charlie Brown to this. If you added another magnet inside the nail, you could have 
um, down below like on the ground on the grass you could have it where Charlie Brown could be standing there and you could sculpt a little Charlie Brown and you could have extra elements to this there's so many opportunities and so many different ways to really personalize this design that it would just be so much fun if you are a Peanuts fan so I'm going to go through with my black acrylic paint and I'm going to be doing the details on the house to begin with there's lots of just little lines that are not straight they are kind of wiggly which is so much fun to just get to do that and not be worried about making the line straight and actually getting to kind of quake your hand a little bit and make your brush wiggle lots of fun um, and then above the doorway I'm going to write Snoopy I'm going to begin with the second O and so O-P-Y and then working backwards O-N-S apply some gel sealer over the grass it is glitter so I do want it to be nice and shiny and then some matte top coat over Snoopy's house set that to the side to dry and then I'm going to do all of the little detailing on the two Snoopies that I have for my house sitters when I am adding the details to each of my Snoopies, I'm going to use a lot of black outlining. These characters are, you know, they're from a comic strip. They have intense black outlines. They aren't like modern day cartoon characters that have very soft outlines that are really subtle. These have no qualms about advertising the fact that they are a drawing, which I love. And so definitely don't go shy on the outlines if you wanted to. One thing that I've always, you know, associated with Snoopy is that his ears look like they've been scribbled. And I went back and forth about whether or not sculpting the ears white and then using my acrylic paint to scribble them in to blacken them out. And I really almost did it. I was so tempted. I thought, no, no, any sculpture you see of Snoopy, they're always just solid black. So that's up to you. On my woodstock, I painted both eyes and smile on both sides of his body. I felt that looked right on Snoopy. I didn't do that, but for woodstock, it just seemed like that was the way to go. And then for your other little aviator Snoopy, go through and do his outlines. This one, you can see the spots that are on his back and tail because he's, you can see his back whereas the other one who's snoozing you cannot he's got a very serious expression on his face this time this is serious business add the little outlines on his on his paws on his feet on his belly body add outlines around the different parts of his outfit that he's wearing on his scarf hat goggles etc the little scribbly lines on the bottom of his feet and then you can apply some matte top coat over him as well and after you have all of them done, this is it. You can play around with it. You can switch who's sleeping on top or driving on top. Or if, like I said, if you have more characters to it, you could have so much fun with this and set up little scenes. You could make like a whole series of nails with different scenes of from the different Peanuts movies and comic strips and switch things out. You could just really do a lot with it. I hope you guys like it. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye.